I always wanted to serve on a jury. I'm really super excited to be here, so I really appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to it. Creating this whole trial, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give a big shout out to the 13th Jury Podcast and Brandy. Yeah, and I applaud you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. That every time you run into Phil Barber, you should reach for yes. <laughs> And then I just looked to the jury, and it's sort of like, look. I was in the eye of the storm, and you guys were watching the storm. Hey, if you're bored of work, come pop in and say, hey, watch it. <laughs> you are a ray of sunshine, and I love what you've done with your YouTube channel. chapstick and then I just look at my lips look really weird um hello good morning good morning good morning long time no see um I had to reboot everything while we were um away from each other and I think everything is working better now so hallelujah to that because I can't stand a slow computer uh Tori the sea lady gifted a membership thank you it went to Lindsay Hendrix Lindsay Hendrix welcome back to the green side welcome back to the green side it is good to have you here um good morning good morning good morning my friends uh so so let's chat um I let me give you Lucy Lucy's here too um, <laughs> look at her. She is useless. Um, let's, let's chat. Uh, happy eight month anniversary. Happy, happy eight month anniversary to you. I uh, woke up and said a prayer for you. Blessings. Oh, yay. I love waking up and saying prayers. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, happy eight month anniversary. Um, so let's chat. So we've been watching this trial this um timothy verrill trial the drug ring uh double murder trial right right so <laughs> i got a message from i don't know if she wants me to say her name or if this is anonymous so i'm going to not say her name and if you're in chat right now and you're like, oh, it's cool, it's me, then that's fine, but I'm not going to say your name in case you want to not have your name said. Um, but I, I have somebody who messaged me who knows one of the victims um, and lives in the area, and things just got a whole lot weirder, I will tell you, because the information that she sent me, she sent me some some Facebook stuff and uh, like some uh, posts that were done on um, Facebook and on YouTube about others, like about kind of some of the stuff going on with this. And let me tell you, before we get, get diving in today, I'm gonna tell you this is, it got a whole lot weirder. So let me share my screen and I'll show you some of the stuff that um, that this, oops, wrong one. Oops, oops, dang it. Dang it. Hold on. I'm having problems here. See, look at all this stuff that we have to go through for this. Uh... Goodness gracious alive. All kinds of problems. Let's see. That should be that one. Done. That should be that. Nope. Nope. Oh, yep. There we go. Oh, I guess because I rebooted it, I have to reset my settings. We got this. We got this. All right. Um, there we go. Okay. All right. So, uh, 
I will tell you. We're going to look at some of this before we jump into it. Some of this stuff has got is kind of it's kind of weird, y'all. Um, yeah, it does look like the Matrix. When I have to like redo that, it's part of what you see. That was one of the three screens that you see, and then when it defaults to that one, then it looks funky when I have to reset it. So I have like screens everywhere. Um, the this is okay so we're just going to go through some of these so they these were sent to me this is some stuff about uh this trial and the people involved in it and all that um so this is one post that was sent um she sent me a link for uh, drug cartel have recently become aware that i knew of their pipeline through my resources in florida and in new hampshire okay so you know how they talked about um the homeowner, Dean, he uh, has ties here in Florida as well. So that part is going to come out in just a moment. But um, anyway, uh, um, Cartel have asked Judge Tucker to freeze my asset of state corruption in order to shut down communications and exposure to their crimes. Is the same judge protecting the cartel who wouldn't allow me to provide evidence or provide my witnesses, even though it included five arresting state troopers? prosecutor who's now a judge, a state senator who admitted in front of eight witnesses um, that Anna Anagnost has been a drug dealer for over 30 years. Um, some of the evidence that Tucker refused was an audio tape for murder for hire. So there's all this stuff. Uh, what I've discovered in the cartel has recently found out is one of their largest drug pipelines, which goes from Florida to South Carolina to New Hampshire. Um, you will see in the post Two women who were murdered in Farmington, New Hampshire. These women were witnesses. Christine Sullivan's boyfriend was the cartel's contact. He was arrested in South Carolina with Miss Sullivan for possession of guns, drugs, and bomb-making material. His name is Dean Smaronk. Dean owns the Farmington house, and he also has residency in Florida. I have... So, bomb-making materials... I did not have that on my bingo card for this, y'all. Uh, I have the witnesses that incriminated him in Florida. He's the cartel's connection in New Hampshire. If those women gave him up, he could turn in the state evidence against the cartel. They hired a man named Timothy Verrill from Dover to murder these two witnesses as he worked for Mr. Smaronk. So this has taken like a whole new, like now we're looking at this as instead of it just him being um, paranoid, that now there's posts saying that he was potentially hired to take care of, take care of them or however they word it. Um, uh, he worked for Mr. Smaronk. Uh, Veril in all places is in the same courtroom in the same courthouse of Stratford County who ignored all the murder attempts against me and my evidence against the same drug cartel. This is not a coincidence. Veril was turned in by the cartel to be prosecuted in that same courthouse so that he could get a lighter sentence. Um, and the cartel's contact Smoronk would not be implicated in the murders seeing he was the only one with a visible motive to murder. The same cartel in front of the same judge has approved a motion to attach state of corruption, calling it an asset. So, um, so this is, this goes on to have, um, this is so much, this is, It got, it, it got so weird. Okay, all right, so um, um, I, Gregory Scott Goodyear, have single-handedly exposed numerous drug smuggling operations into the United States in which your Department of Justice FBI agents came down to see me in March. Um, okay, I tied Dean Smoronk from Lee County, Florida, up to South Carolina to New Hampshire, where, in fact, his girlfriend, Christine Sullivan, and Jenna Pellegrini murdered because she knew too much about his operation working with government officials. I 
I mean, if this if this turns out to be true, this could be. It's a whole different. It's a whole different. That's a, that's a whole different thing. Um, he clearly paid off judges and attorneys in 2014 after he got out of jail in Sumter County, South Carolina. Uh, he ended up at the Sable Park Inn in North Fort Myers, Florida, attempting to set up a drug ring. And Enzo Vincini, as this was spoken about in over a two-hour interview on the 13th of March inside Cape Coral, Florida um, Police Department, Vincenzi was warned by me the feds were coming out to his hotel. He caught assist U assistant U.S. attorney John Daly and Detective Lucas on video proving my allegations correct of federal officials being involved in this interview. Um, so the, the, it names these people have been smuggling drugs from South America and conned Enzo out of his hotel then we're going to kill him with the help of the kingpin sheriff Mike Scott's knowledge due to the 20th circuit corruption all this backfired so they opened up a bar in Fort Myers with numerous violations um, so it talks about 55 gallon drums of meth in liquid form being brought in from other countries. I mean, this stuff is crazy. So this, um, oh, the arrest in Sumter, South Carolina came after a traffic stop on I-95. Oh yeah, I have that. I think here. So the couple, couple arrested after cash, drugs, and bomb making materials found in car. Um, Sumter County, South Carolina. Authorities arrested a New Hampshire couple on I-95 Wednesday after sheriff's deputies found drugs, over $12,000 in cash, and bomb making materials in their car in Sumter County. Dean Smoronk, 52, and Christina Kuozzi, 45, were stopped on is that her is that her is that the same Christina um so their car pulled into the lane of a Sumter County deputy and almost swiped sideswiped the cruiser during the stop a canine unit was called and suspected methamphetamine was found in Cuozo's purse This is Dean. Is is this the same Christina? Because this was before. This was in 2014. Um, so they uh, suspected methamphetamine was found in Cuozo's purse, and a large quantity of suspected methamphetamine was found inside a fake energy drink, along with a small amount of a fake energy drink, along with a small amount of marijuana pills and an unknown white powder inside a black computer bag. Dennis said an open bottle of Crown Royal was also found under the driver's seat and $12,529 in cash was found in some luggage inside Kuozzi's purse and inside Kuozzi's purse. Um, while searching inside the vehicle, authorities also found a brown box with a plumber's putty container with gunpowder and steel shot from cut open shotgun shells and several bomb making materials. The interstate was shut down for a brief period in order to safely remove the materials from the car. Uh, Smoronk and Kuozo are facing several charges including possession of bomb making materials, possession of a controlled substance and trafficking methamphetamine. Um, They're just going to Walmart. Um, so this says that Dean, a well-known drug smuggler, manufacturer of Lee County, Florida, uh, Cape Coral and Farmington, New Hampshire resident who brings drugs into the United States from several other countries, set up surveillance on potential witnesses and paid $25,000 per hit on people. According to his drug collector, federal sources, 
have gained statements over. He was released on serious charges in South Carolina in which no trial has ever taken place as exposed, and there's a link to the video. Smronk offered his drug money collector $50,000 to kill Christine Sullivan out at a Super 8 hotel in North Fort Myers, Florida in December 2016. And three months later, they hired Timothy Verrill to kill Sullivan and Jenna Pellegrini on January 27th. His very large drug operation implicates many high-ranking officials up to Washington, D.C., who were involved in letting him go over the charges in South Carolina. Uh, James Comey would have been the FBI director at the time of both transactions of his criminal case and the double murders. He's tied heavily into the drug trade that has created many addictions throughout the United States. Um, former FBI director Louis whatever, did a report on the Fort Myers Police Department that was released shortly after these murders on February 22nd, 2017. Several high-ranking officers were fired in the police department. Um, and then there's links to all these. So this is, I mean, so this kind of just took a little bit of a weird, a weird turn. Um, on December... Oh, wait. Cops were tipping off drug dealers on search warrants. They are involved in trafficking drugs in collusion with the Sheriff's Department. On December 22nd, 2017, more information was released implicating Lee County Sheriff Mike Scott, who further proves his involvement in working with Dean. This information backs up the claims of hits being ordered on witnesses and high-ranking officers in the Sheriff's Office allowing drug dealers to transport narcotics in a patrol vehicle. There is an active federal investigation on this matter. So, um, and I don't know what this is. Let's see. Oh, these are handwritten motions. You're saying these are, so these are handwritten motions and it says, the state of Florida versus Keith Lycus. Um, comes now. I, Gregory Scott Goodyear. It says, I exposed the double murder of Christine Sullivan and Jenna Pellegrini. So... So that's kind of crazy, right? And then there's a video. Anonymous exposes New Hampshire double murder tied to Lee County, Florida, Florida Sheriff Mike Scott. So I don't know if I'm allowed to play this. Um, I haven't seen this, so. Okay, so then that was the same. Um, so she had a different last name um, before, but that was the same. And FYI, I have not watched this. So, I don't know what's on here. That's the that's the article that we were just showing with the bomb stuff and all of that. Oh, you can't hear it? Hold on. I can hear it. Why can't you hear it? 
Oh, it default. It did that thing where it defaulted again, where it changed my audio output. Okay, hold on. I forget it does this every single time I have to reboot my computer. Okay. Let's try this again. Now has ties to drug cartel in Lee County, Florida and Sheriff Mike Scott on the 20th Judicial Circuit Courts. Dean Smaronka, well-known drug dealer and manufacturer, was arrested in Sumter County, South Carolina with his now-deceased girlfriend Christine Sullivan. Sullivan and Jenna Pellegrini were found stabbed to death in Smaronk's home on Sunday morning approximately 3 a.m. January 29, 2017. These horrendous acts of violence stem right to Lee County, Florida Sheriff Mike Scott and the drug cartel. Sullivan, a well-known supporter of the music industry and great photographer in Lee County, Florida, was very loved and admired for her caring ways. Sullivan simply made some bad decisions by getting caught up in the world of drugs. Smaronk and Sullivan's serious arrest in South Carolina on February 19, 2014 and while traveling in between his Cape Coral, Florida and his New Hampshire home. They both had a million dollar bond each. While they sat incarcerated for some time, it is unknown what the resolution to this very serious arrest actually was. A substantial amount of drugs were found, and with bomb making material and over $12,000 in cash. Many news sources stated that more charges were going to be placed upon them. Lee County, Florida Sheriff Mike Scott was exposed by the Fort Myers News Press several years ago, with his close friendship to Richard Spence who admitted to laundering drugs. Federal officials stated in the New York Times, that they formed one of the biggest drug money laundering operations the authorities have ever uncovered in New York, shipping more than $100 million from New York, Miami, Houston, Los Angeles and other cities, as well as Canada and Europe, to the world headquarters of the cocaine business in Cali, Colombia. Many lawyers were involved in this very large drug operation with Richard Spence. Sheriff Mike Scott has been dubbed the kingpin by FBI sources has been involved in many cover-ups and scandalous situations over the years. He has escaped without and reprimand by high government officials. June of 2014, Smaronk and Sullivan were miraculously out of jail and traveling back and forth from Florida to New Hampshire. The charges they received would not allow any normal person to travel from state to state. The FBI and the Obama administration was very compromised and Lee County, Florida is one of the most corrupt areas in the United States. A very large percentage of the federal prosecutors here were former state prosecutors in this very connected area. This area is secured by the drug cartel. Glades County, Florida is also part of the 20th Circuit Courts in which the sheriff's office is under federal investigation due to being opened up by the Miami Herald in late 2015 for laundering over $71 million. Inzo Vincenzi bought a hotel in Lee County, Florida and it was conned out of him and stolen by the local government officials because they were operating illegal activity out of it and officials were being paid off. After five years, three judge and going through six attorneys Inzo received this property back. A month prior to this property given back Judge Shira Weinsit who helped steal the property with the help of Sheriff Mike Scott and the state attorney she resigned. June of 2014 Smaronk was attempting to set Inzo Vincenzi up and start running drugs out of the Sabel Oasis Inn. This was immediately caught by Enzo and his people were kicked out of the property. Due to this serious issue that federal authorities are highly aware of and took no action. Shortly after Enzo received his property back in Sept of 2013 he was informed that a hit was placed out on him. The Lee County Sheriff's Office wired someone up and it was admitted. No action was taken on this matter. Convicted Carly Cartel Richard Spence also donated and helped with former Governor Charlie Christ campaign. Lee County, Florida Sheriff Mike Scott and public officials in the 20th Circuit Courts are guilty of these horrendous murders. Anonymous now questions the Sumter County government as to what happened to the charges that took place on February 19, 2014. Christine Sullivan and Jenna Pellegrini's would still be living if a deal by federal authorities was not made to save the operations in southwest Florida from being exposed. We do not forgive. We do not forget. We are anonymous. Expect us. Wow. So, you know, what's crazy <laughs> is that um, that is basically saying that uh, if I mean, if this is true, that that arrest that was made um, where they almost sideswiped the police cruiser. So they got pulled over and they found all the like drugs and cash and bomb stuff. Um they're saying if that had not happened and they did not cut a deal for that, then according to this, then, um, then the two victims would still be alive because 
that's it's saying that Dean paid Dean paid to have them taken out, which is um which is I mean that's it's this is wild stuff. So, um I don't even know what to say. Uh, very interesting. If, it, it, but it kind of gives us a whole new slant to you know watch the information coming out too. Because if this is, um, if any of this is true, it it kind of um, it it's crazy, but. You know, crazier things have happened. If in, if if it's true, though, then that's like, I mean, it's a whole different thing that we're watching. Then, isn't it? That's nuts. Um, all right. Let's see. We had, um, We had a few minutes left in day four when we ended, because I had to end for my meeting. Um, but we were watching just all of the video evidence, uh, or like video of him shopping. Remember all the different shopping trips he went on and all of that? Um, where is Dean now? I don't know, let's see, Dean Swirl. Um, let's see, in 2017, he was sentenced in a Virginia drug case. Um, Yeah, he went to he went to Coles. He went to spend his his Coles cash. Um, okay, so this was uh, 2017 um, in Hanover, Virginia. The Farmington man who owns the house where two women were found murdered in January has been incarcerated in a Virginia jail since he was arrested after a traffic stop in June. Um, last Friday, he uh, pled. No contest in Hanover County Circuit Court to two felony drug charges and was sentenced to 10 years in prison with all but one year suspended. Two other felony charges that Smonk was indicted on were dismissed. So wait, wait, what? He was sentenced to 10 years with all but one suspended? And then the two other felony charges were dismissed. How does that happen? Um, according to Virginia State Police, Smonk was arrested after a traffic stop. According to State Police Sergeant Stephen Vick. Troopers stopped a 2016 Ford Transit van at 454 a.m. on June 11th for speeding in a work zone on southbound interstate. Okay, that's like drug trafficking 101. You don't speed in a work zone at 454 a.m. Um, police contend that Dusty Cousins, 40, of Summersworth was driving the vehicle but switched with Smoronk as they were coming to a stop on the right shoulder of the road. During the course of the investigation, a consent search was conducted and numerous illegal narcotics and paraphernalia were located in the vehicle and also on a passenger, Nicholas Batista, 20, of Rochester. Vicks wrote in an email in June, narcotics included heroin, MDMA, ecstasy, crystal methamphetamine, two forms of anabolic steroids, needles, glass meth pipes, packaging materials, and digital scales. 
Spronk was charged with one count of possession of steroids with intent to sell, one count of possession of a Schedule Three controlled substance with intent to sell, and two counts of possession of controlled substances, all felonies. He was also charged with two misdemeanor counts of possession of controlled substances, a misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia, and a misdemeanor obstruction of justice charge. Uh, prosecutors dismissed all the misdemeanor charges at a November 3rd hearing. According to online records, a grand jury indicted Smronk on November 21st of the four felony charges. Um, he pled he pled guilty on November 1st and was given a five-year sentence, all of which was suspended. A five-year sentence, all of which is suspended. The Pamon Pamonkey Regional Jail in Hanover, Virginia, where Smonk has been held since his arrest, shows a scheduled release date of December 15, 2018. However, a person in the records department of the jail did not know if Smoronk would receive time credit for pretrial confinement. If he does, he could be released in June. We need to look and see when he was released. Uh, New Hampshire authorities have not implicated him in the double homicide, though the state attempted to seize $14,146 in cash um, found during the murder investigation. Stafford County Superior Court judge dismissed the state's case because it was filed late. So he's just getting all kinds of stuff dismissed. Spronk still has a pending misdemeanor charge of criminal mischief from May 31st. Um, there's a warrant issue for his arrest after he missed a July court hearing. He also has pending drug charges in Sumter County, South Carolina from the 2014 traffic stop. Wow. Wow. Okay, so here's another one. He had... What just happened? Farmington Man. So this is a later one. What happened? Farmington Man sentenced for meth trafficking. So this one was... December 18, 2019. Okay, so this one's federal. He was sentenced Tuesday to 42 months in federal prison for participating in methamphetamine trafficking conspiracy. Um, he planned to have methamphetamine shipped from California to Lebanon. How do you have that shipped? Like, like, just, hey, if you could FedEx all of this methamphetamine to me, that'd be great, thanks. On July 10, 2018, DEA received information that the shipment of meth was underway. They contacted U.S. Postal... Don't they have, like... Like... I mean, I don't know how it works, but, it, like... Wouldn't you... Wouldn't that... Like, you have to, like, check that you're not even sending anything, like, aerosol and... Just, I don't know. Okay. What, let me just read. Um... DEA contacted the U.S. Postal Inspection Service for assistance, located the package in transit. Um, they seized it before delivery and transported it to New Hampshire. Uh, they used K-9 alerted to the presence of narcotics. The package resulted in the seizure of 67.8 grams of ice meth. 67.8. I'm assuming that's a lot, right? I use Amazon. Oh, Fur Baby's mom uses Amazon. Okay, that's good to know. They can, Maybe they can't check. So for all of your future meth deliveries, just use Amazon. Um, let's see. They observed him for... They observed him remain for... Okay, let's, let's try that again. On July 11th, 2018, DEA agents observed Smoronk remain for several hours at the delivery address in Lebanon... DEA learned Smoronk was at the address to retrieve the package and left after it did not arrive. Um, he, after the next several days, he became concerned law enforcement had intercepted the package. Yeah. Um, 
So they determined that Laurel Bennett of California conspired with him to send the meth. Um... Wow. So, 